Welcome to the RSP Film Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Today, we're going to take another look at Wyoming quarterback Josh Allen. Now, I've done a film room on Josh Allen where I compared and contrast his poise and pocket behavior with Lamar Jackson, the Louisville quarterback. And Allen didn't come out in a favorable light in a lot of those looks. And it's a little bit more complex than that. I want to show you some of the positives of Josh Allen's game, because they are there. Even though the draft community on the internet tends to pan him because of some of the early favorable comparisons, the stats that haven't been very strong with his game, but you, you know, and there's a lot of confusion about why he's being touted as an early round pick in some circles, whether that's something that has to do with agents influencing media or do old school scouts feel that way or do does the majority of the NFL feel this way now there are a lot of different things circulating about what's really you know the root cause of this but I can tell you this when you watch his film you can see some of those old school traits that really appeal to the NFL establishment and I'm going to take you through some of those as well as point out things that where maybe the NFL establishment is a little flawed and outmoded in the way that it looks at quarterback play when you compare what they like to look at and what we hear a lot from you know, big draft media who's rooted and taught in those old school ways and what's actually maybe needed in the NFL based on who has been starring lately in the league, which offenses have been the exception to the rule and have been successful with some of the college and spread concepts and what that means for what quarterbacks do in those and what they do or don't need. And then also who some of the most successful quarterbacks are and what they have that may not be on the physical end of the spectrum, but on the emotional IQ strategic end of quarterbacking, which I would argue is the most important part and the most undertrained aspect of quarterbacking in professional football. There are certain instances where Josh Allen is not good against pressure and others where he's just fine. This is an example of excellent work from Allen on a third and 20, the very next play after he takes a sack that he shouldn't have taken. Play action pass, he's looking to his left. He sees the out route here, but that's not where he wants to go on third and 20. So, you know, he's trying to buy time for one of his deeper routes here. With pressure coming to the inside, he delivers that hard play fake, draws that defender further inside, and then look at the way that he slides with this nice Tom Brady type of hop gallop to the outside to keep his feet under him. That's beautiful. That's fantastic work from Josh Allen. And what that does is he opens himself up to some space back to the outside. He's got his feet under him, and now he can throw a ball to number 80, I believe, here across the field and has the arm and velocity to do so. And this is a nice across the field throw. This is a really good example of good aggression and control to do that. He's not, he's got his feet under him to do that. He's not rolling out and trying to throw across the momentum of his rollout. This is fantastic technical skill right here from Allen. And it shows you that he's not afraid of pressure. He can overreact to some forms of pressure, but in this particular case, he doesn't overreact at all. He baits, he baits the defense to the outside with that nice hard pump fake. Technically very sound here, and he's able to get himself into a position where he can throw that ball with accuracy. That's excellent play. When I see a play like this, I can't dismiss him as bad against pressure because this is very good against pressure. It's just that there are certain forms of pressure that he's not good at. So you're going to have to determine, can we, can we try to minimize that type of pressure? Can we easily do that? Or can we count on him to get better and learn some of the techniques that will help him be as good in this particular play in situations where he's been bad? Because the footwork there is really well done. There's, there's no running here. It's just simply, you know, this, again, like I said, Tom Brady. Tom Brady moves like this. Very controlled, hopping on the balls of his feet, keeping his feet in position. Excellent play. When he can climb the pocket, he's generally accurate. 
and when he can climb and reset. He also shows here that he can play from a dirty pocket at times when it's climbing up the field and he feels like he has room early in the play. He may overreact early in plays when the pressure comes too early or he's got to look somewhere other than downfield and he's looking off to one of the sides, you know, somewhere in the flats. That's where I think he gets a little bit more jittery. But watching him climb here, he doesn't have much room in the pocket. He sees his open man coming, and he's able to make a jump throw here so that he makes sure he gets it off. And he has no other choice in this particular play than to put some touch on the ball because he can't get his feet under him and throw the ball with the defender in his chest. So it's a nice play. And so when you say simplistically, Josh Allen overreacts to pressure, you're not counting some of the plays where he can climb, reset, and even fire a little bit off platform here and do it with enough wisdom with touch to at least give his receiver a chance and not give the defender a chance. Now, if he could have stuck this throw with velocity or lead the receiver a little bit further to the right side, you know, maybe this defender in trail can't catch up to him and it's a touchdown. But let's give credit where credit's due. This was a difficult situation in a dirty pocket. And he shows poise on this particular play. Here's another good example of Allen working well in a pocket. Dropping back three steps, looking up to his left seam. Feels that pressure coming from the edge and also a push up the middle. And here comes number 93 getting up, you know, getting outside the guard here, it looks like. Or is that the tackle? It looks like the tackle. Good job here of keeping his eyes down feet, field, his feet under him, and he just climbs two steps and fires. That's that subtle movement you're looking for. So here's the thing. Evaluators see this tape. They see some of the other examples of him making a couple of steps and throwing from dirty pockets. And they're going to ignore some of these issues possibly of, you know, overreacting to certain types of pressure. I mean, this is a touchdown. It's a really nice play. I mean, do you look at this and say, Josh Allen can't hang in the pocket? No. This is clear evidence that he can. And that he can keep his feet under him and throw the ball. We've seen at least three of these right now in different games, or at least in different exposures. The question is, how do we pinpoint where his pocket presence is good and when it struggles? Another thing that NFL evaluators are going to like about Josh Allen is that they like evidence of pinpoint accuracy and some evidence of manipulating the defense. And, you know, when you see that combined with the athletic skills, you see that he can pump fake. You can see that he can look off a defense. Here he is looking off to the left and holding this defender to, to at least account for the middle of the field because that's where Allen's looking. But it's setting up this outside twin right receiver running the back shoulder fade and he throws this ball about 26 yards pinpoint accuracy where the receiver can get it in tight coverage you know this is you know teams look at this and they say all right we see moments of manipulation we see the moments of pinpoint accuracy there are some things that can be cleaned up here but you combine that with the arm and the and the strength and and they think of what these big time quarterbacks around his size have been able to do and they look at the results of that and they find they look for correlations to that. Whether their correlation is truly there or not is the bigger question, but they're going to associate these types of correlations based on a lot of their experiences watching quarterbacks who've you know got similar size, arm strength, and accuracy skills in some of these situations. I think one of the more fundamental questions that arise when evaluating quarterbacks is, can you teach wisdom? And I contend that it's much more difficult to teach wisdom than it is to accumulate knowledge because you can determine intelligence and you can get an idea of whether a player has the ability to accumulate information and to be able to spit it back out. But it's another thing to be able to have the wisdom to take a variety of different sources of information and turn something 
turn that into something that's useful and effective. And when you look at a situation like this play, there's a lot of knowledge here, but there's not a lot of wisdom. Second and 13. So, yes, he looks outside. He sees that the coverage leverage isn't probably all that great at this stage. He could throw this wide route, but the way the leverage of this coverage is at the hash, that makes no sense on second and 13 for him. So he wants to try and extend the play a little bit and see if he can get something a little deeper. Pressure comes. He's going to do a good job. Knowledge again, reducing that outside shoulder to try and get away from the defender. And he spins out of it. But right here, this is the point where you say, you know what? It's time to just throw the ball away. Again, second and 13. You are down by three. You're in field goal range. This looks a lot like the Iowa play that I showed in a previous Boiler Room breakdown. He looks out to the left side. Nothing's open. Throw the ball. Just throw the ball away right here. That's all you have to do. Instead, you're going to try and look to see if there's more that's going to be created at the very last moment. Sometimes don't stretch your athletic ability to the last moment here. The ball goes flying out of bounds. He didn't throw it. It just basically, he got slung down to the ground and lost control of the ball. This is not wisdom. This is high effort. This has some sort of, you know, I would say physical intelligence in terms of understanding the technique to get away from pressure. But he's not piecing it all together to understand second and 13. We're down by three. We're in field goal range. Let's keep, let's stay in field goal range and not lose yardage. Let's talk a little bit more about the wisdom of playing the game. It's third and four, 36 seconds left in the third quarter. Now they're up by 16, so you may say whatever. But again, it's about executing consistently throughout a game. And when he reads the field, you have a high safety on the right side inside the hash. You've got single coverage on this outside twin right receiver who's going to be running a slant inside. Even the, the linebackers playing fairly inside here. So this should be the first place you look. And when you watch Josh Allen, he actually looks here. See that? He had a quick little look there, and then he turns back to the other side. If he was reading pre-snap, he would have stayed with this look. But he doesn't. He comes off of that and looks further downfield where the position of the safety pre-snap wasn't very good in the first place. It's it's pretty low here over these two guys. So why is he looking here when he's got a much better coverage look to the outside as his first read? And if he looks here and stays looking here, watch this setup. You've already got your slot man working that linebacker further to the inside. You've got that deep safety here. This breaks open. But Allen's in no position really to throw the ball. When he finishes his drop, looking left and feels the pressure, he doesn't have his feet under him. He's he's going to kind of hop and run. And now he looks to his left or looks to his right. And at this point, he's not in position to throw the ball because the reaction to the pressure was too extreme. There's a difference between fight and flight. And when I talk about a, a quarterback and how he reacts to pressure, Fighting is when you got your shoulders up, when you got your feet under you, and you're ready to throw the ball. You're ready to throw that punch. Flight is when you're ducking and evading and you're running. And you see the head and shoulders duck a little bit in the run. And this is all flight mechanism here. And then he slips. So, you know, he misses some opportunities because sometimes he will flee more than he will fight. It's just not consistent. So which one are you going to get from Josh Allen? Are you going to get the guy who climbs or does a couple of nice little side steps and finds an opening and throws? Or are you going to get a guy that when he's pinned in on either side, he rushes his process, misses an open man, number 25 here, because he had to rush that process and was in no position to throw and ends up doing this type of thing. This is a pivotal situation in the middle of the fourth quarter, third and 11, you know, in a, in a red zone situation. And you're going to have pressure coming off the left side here. Now, pre-snap, you should know that there's pressure coming based on the look of the front 
seven here, and you're going to see who you have all stacked up on the line. And with your offense spread out like this, you know you're going to get some free pressure off the edge most likely. So one of the things you're going to need to do is to be in a hurry. You need to get into a throwing position fast. And he doesn't do that. You're going to watch his drop. It's a three-step drop, and it's kind of slow. And you might say, well, it's not slow. He's in ready to throw with this receiver breaking to the inside on the slant, and he's looking right at him. So it's just that the defender off this left side is getting there faster than what the drop affords. But let me give you a reason why I think this drop needs to be faster. One is he knows that pressure's coming. Two, just the pace is slow enough that when he does get set up, see how wide his feet are? He didn't have time to really hitch into this throw either. He's just about to hitch and and deliver that ball as he's hit. He could have been about another, I'd say another step earlier if he took a little bit of a faster pace, hitched once, or at least stood there with his feet a little bit tighter together. He would have had a, a narrower stance, which he would have liked to have seen. He'd have more control over the throw. And he also would have had more control to take a step upward from that pressure coming so that he could have thrown it without getting hit. Or he could have thrown it a little bit earlier because of the fact that he could have led this man still anticipating the break a little bit more. And he's usually pretty good at anticipating breaks. But this one, you can see too, that as he begins to throw the ball, the break's already happening. So he hasn't really dropped in sync with this particular route. It's a slow drop. It needs to be faster. So part of this is technically... Can he get faster with his drops? Can he get more control over his feet? The answer is yes. The other answer is, the other question is, does he have the wisdom and can he develop the wisdom to understand, okay, it's not just about executing a three-step drop. It's not just about seeing whether or not the slant's going to come open. It's also about understanding this pressure, understanding this third and 11. You're in field goal range. You, you know, you have an opportunity here to still pick up a first down and have a whole new series inside the five, you know, go faster. You need more urgency here. And his feet don't say urgency. You know, there's a fine line between urgency and panic. This isn't showing urgency. This is showing a disconnect between the urgency of the situation and what he needs to do. This looks like the language of the old NFL. And a lot of the people who are the old NFL are your scouts and GMs. They see this and they go, that, this is exactly what we're looking for. Guy who can do play action. Guy who can throw the ball in rhythm. Someone who's got some power on that throw to make stick throws. This is beautiful. This is what we want. And it's good, regardless of whether it's old school or new school football. That's a nice throw to beat the safety coming across the field and to throw it into a window that's reasonably tight. Watch him help out with this pump fake on a double move to the receiver in the slot come working up the, the left seam here. You get this pump fake. That's a nice violent pump fake. Pretty good motion there. And then reset and fire. And he does it with a nice bit of loft to the ball. There's touch on this. And when you think of Josh Allen, you think of him as a power thrower, a guy who you know puts it on a line 40, 50, 60 yards in the air, on the run, throwing bullets everywhere. But this is not that kind of play. You can see that he's got an off-speed off pitch and that he knows how to use it oftentimes. And this was the perfect example to do that. And to be able to also vary the speed with a violent pump fake and then just take something off the ball right there, that's nice control. So that's something to work with. And when teams look at a player like Allen and they see this type of thing, they this is what makes them think, oh, you know, he shows some versatility. He shows some control over the way that he throws the ball. We can teach him. He can learn. He can develop more wisdom and experience you know, through experience. That's the mindset here. But there are different types or different stages of wisdom and different areas of application for wisdom. And to me, this is more, you know, technical savvy as opposed to, you know, full game situation, piecing together game situation, pressure, you know, reacting to the defense. This is him just dictating all the way. 
This is a learned behavior of dictating, oh, it's a double move, pump, and now just loft it over there. It's a simplistic form of wisdom compared to, you know, understanding that pressure's coming and you may have to speed up your drop so that you can deliver the ball on time or that pressure's coming and you're in the red zone and you're losing and you need to make sure, not in the red zone, but in field goal range, and you need to make sure that you don't take a sack. That's piecing disparate information together. This play is more about We've got a good plan. Execute it. This is a promising play from Allen because you're going to watch him here deal with pressure in his face, and he's going to show just enough patience to wait another beat longer and throw the ball with touch. And so when you can throw the ball in with touch in a situation where you would tend to want need to hurry or feel the urgency to hurry your throw and throw with more velocity... There's some wisdom in that. And you can see that here. Opposite hash, loft that ball up from about 29 yards. And with pressure in his face, he waits. See how he waits that extra beat? Let's watch it one more time here. Like you'd think it's going to come out now, but he waits just another half beat to throw that ball. And that's so that he can. He just realizes, let me put a little more up, a little more air under it. Good touch here. Good touch, good accuracy, and and still combining that with the power that you need to be able to throw this ball opposite field and do so under pressure. Now here's an example of touch from Allen working to his left. When you have a roll to the left and be able to throw the ball with ease, with this nice level of touch, you know, from about the 33 to about the 11, so about 22 yard throw, on the move to the left with touch to just kind of loft it up there, let the receiver run under it. This is good stuff. And you can see how when the NFL, from their old school ways of thinking is, he plays in our type of offense that we've often played in. He can execute when it comes to rollouts and being able to throw with accuracy. He's got the big arm. He knows how to use it with control as well as with velocity. There's a lot to like here. That's from their standpoint. The thing is, though, is that we just saw players that we heard last year who might not be great fits to this traditional form of NFL play excel in spread sets. And we're seeing more and more spread sets happening in terms of offenses. And sometimes you wonder if the operations staff, you know, you're your coaches and your offensive coordinators are a little ahead of the people who are shopping for the groceries right now who are still thinking about I formation. Another example of good touch is just the screen game. He's very good at the screen game. You can see him baiting defenders in, turning around, throwing off platform, just being able to loft that ball up there. Play action roll out to the right. And the defense has him pinned here. I mean, you can look at this. You've got three men in pursuit. You're forcing him to widen his angle a little bit so that he has to extend his time downfield. And now he doesn't have much room to throw this ball. And he's going to have to try and throw it downfield with a lot of power. And this is a type of late power that you don't normally see from quarterbacks, even NFL quarterbacks. There aren't a lot of them who can throw it like that and squeeze the ball in there. And he did squeeze it in there. Watch this. I mean, this is fantastic display of physical talent as a thrower. I mean, with room to spare. I know it's in the NFL, you need to get two feet down. But the fact that he can throw the ball this late and give his receiver a chance like that, I mean, and look how tight the coverage is. I mean, that's inches, folks. You're throwing that ball... Widening your route, you're throwing that ball from what, the 27 to about the 2? So you're throwing that ball 25 yards and at a very, very, very late window like that? That's freakishly good. And so when they see freakishly good like that, you know, they think they can build on that. They think the other things will come. And sometimes they're right. 
sometimes players will show that they have the the wisdom, the learning capacity to take things, disparate information, put it together and become better players. And that experience can teach them that. But what you're looking at here is is still unrefined talent with touches of just unbelievable physical ability that make this look unbelievably refined. It's not. This is physical skill. It's accuracy. The accuracy is refined. But the, there's, it's not about decision making. It's more because because I can. This is more of a, the defense saying, we're going to pay you into a corner and we bet you can't do it. It's kind of like the example of a drinking contest or a feat of strength as opposed to a chess match. At the same time, I've shown you numerous examples of Allen's touch, but I talk about how a lot of those cases are about executing it within the scope of the design play. When you have something that shows up out of the ordinary, do you have the wisdom to take advantage of it and the wisdom to execute in the right way? And I have questions about that with Rosen, I mean, excuse me, with Allen here when you watch this particular first and 10 play, because this is an example of where he didn't use touch in the appropriate way. He knows that he's got a wide open receiver here because you've got two defenders out here pre-snap now about to chase him here because there's nobody out there. And Allen recognizes that pre-snap, so that's good. But he lofts this ball. Get the ball out quick. The man's looking at you. Put some zip on this ball. Get it to him fast so he can outrun these two defenders coming from inside the hash. Instead, you lead him right into them because you're throwing the ball with too much air under it. And so this is the difference between you know, knowledge and wisdom. The knowledge is, oh, I've got a wide open man here. The wisdom is, let me get it to him fast. You know, you know when you look at the other plays that I showed, a lot of them were, it's a screen play. The way it's going to be positioned, you have, you're taught to throw the ball with loft under it. This is a situation where there's no teaching about this type of situation. It's just more about processing disparate pieces together and when he tries to process that, he doesn't deliver the wisest result when it comes to execution. So I do have questions about you know, just how wise he's ever going to be when it comes to taking these types of situations and turning them into you know, great plays. It's still a positive play. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, this, is, this is still a first down. But this might have been a touchdown. I mean, let's look at it pre-snap again. I mean, pre-snap, you hit this fast, and you've got a fast outside guy here with this angle. Yeah. So, I mean, difference between good and great. So, for me, you look at Allen and say, all right, I see some good things for him as far as future as an NFL player. I can see where the good can come into play. But you're not seeing the flashes of greatness here unless you're just emphasizing that he has a, a big arm. Now here's a play where he could have had a touchdown. Now I like that with this pressure coming off the left edge, he climbs, he resets his feet, and now he fires to the deep post here. But look where the ball lands. Well away from the receiver, too far to the left side. Look at what we have. Is there another safety to the inside, to the right? Not at all. Nobody's here. Lead that receiver to the right side. Keep leading him there. And the way that you do that is, well, when you reset, your back foot has to be in position to lead that receiver further up the right hash. He's not there. When he resets his feet, it's pointed exactly where he throws it. So he's got to do a better job of understanding what, what his defense is showing him. There's nothing here, no one deep on this side pre-snap. He's got to be able to process this quick enough to understand that he's got an opening on a post and that when he slides here, he's got to take that extra step or he's got to take that step in a way where he can reset and throw that ball in an enviable position so that he can work more to the right side. 
second and 17. You're going to watch him on, look to the twin right side here, and everything's covered. You got leverage over top by the safety. You've got this linebacker sliding over. You've got this defender working to a position where both these outside receivers are blocked off. Now, at the same time as he's doing that, you would think, okay, you've got a receiver who's going to run a slant here or right behind this safety, and the safety's sliding over to the right because Allen's looking over to the right. Now, Allen doesn't get a chance to really see what's going to happen here because you can see the receiver breaking inside and this safety out of position now. But Allen, seeing that this isn't open, his first reaction is now to run. He's got this big open crease here, and he feels like that on second and 17, he can run up here, or at least try and try and do that. But as he starts to run, he sees the defender come sliding across, and now he's got to cut back inside, and he's agile enough to do so, and he does a good job, and he gets them, you know, inside, close to the 10, inside the 11 here. So you can see a guy who's capable of really strong work and big mistakes. You know, wise plays and rash plays. And, you know, you may hear the pat answers from GMs or from scouts saying, well, he'll learn, he'll develop. Do we know that for sure? Considering that the percentage for a first-round quarterback actually turning into that franchise player that a team envisioned is less than a 50-50 shot, at least from what we've seen over the past 7 to 10 years, we don't really know whether or not Josh Allen really is going to have that opportunity or any of these quarterbacks, really. But when you look at Josh Allen, he represents the old guard of what the NFL looks for in a quarterback. You wonder about the things that the NFL hasn't always been very good at measuring. Again, think about the Wonderlick test. This is a test made around World War II, just before World War II, for airline for Navy pilots. And this outmoded exam is what's used to gauge a level of intelligence for NFL quarterbacks. You know, considering that Dan Marino scored a 16 on it, Steve McNair scored in the single digits, and those guys were Super Bowl quarterbacks. You know, we have to understand that sometimes we have to look at a league and, and be critical of them. And you have to understand that the, that the NFL may be a little outmoded in its thinking about what it values in a quarterback and what it should value in a quarterback. It doesn't mean that Josh Allen is destined to fail. There's some compelling traits that we've explored here. But it is worthwhile to understand that what the NFL likes may not necessarily be what the NFL needs. Now, it depends on the team that he goes to. You know, Joe Flacco is certainly this type of a quarterback, and it works. it's worked well for him in the NFL. And it may work well for Josh Allen. And Josh Allen may also exceed expectations and develop on a level where he becomes that strategic leader with a strong emotional IQ for the game as he gains experience. But it highlights how much of a hit or miss process quarterback development really is. And more than any prospect at this position, Allen represents that hit or miss quality. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, and more RSP Film Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, The RSP Film Room, my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Matt Waldman. Thanks again.